What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, we updated you guys on Streetcar Joe's Fox Body. And I talked about, I was going to tell you about some events that I got coming up, some really big events. And that's what today's video is about. But I forgot to mention what the events were. So um, October 9th through the 11th, I believe, we have Florida FL2K. So it's Florida's version of TX2K. I think this is their fourth year running. And uh, there's some very, very fast cars down there. So I'm doing kind of the same class that I did at TX2K. Um, it's kind of like a street racer, true street class. Um, quarter mile, heads up, pro tree. Just got to fit the rules. I fit all the rules. And then depending on what time you qualify it, they break it up in a few groups, just like TX2K. So um, that is the first event, the one or the next biggest event I'm going to. I might do some tests and tunes up until then, um, just because I got to make a few small changes to the car. Um, that requires some time, but we got to get working on this thing ASAP. So that's what we're going to start here today. And then November, oh man, I'm going to get the day wrong. Hold on. Let me look on my phone here. So this is a big one. November 4th through the 8th. This is kind of like a bucket list type deal. So TX2K, um, it's one of those things I had watched since I was in high school, always talked about going. And then I finally went and uh, then my next goal was to get my car to TX2K. We grinded, we, it was crazy. Put in a new motor, put in a new turbo, new turbo uh, kit essentially from Streetcar Joe. Um, it was, if you guys haven't, go watch those videos. TX2K was a shit show for my car, but we got it running, we won our class, and uh, it was pretty cool. Knocked that one off the bucket list. So um, FL2K wasn't really on my bucket list per se, but um, it's definitely a race that I really wanna go to, plus, uh, I know a lot of people out in Florida, there's a lot of fast Mustangs out in Florida, so it'd be cool to go race with some of the fastest Coyotes out there. And uh, the next one though, that I was trying to look up the date for, November 4th through the 8th is in Maryland. This year it's called the Hail Mary Derby. It used to be called, or it was called, still is called, uh, Import versus Domestic World Cup Finals. So if you guys don't know, when I was in high school, I was really big into imports, so my favorite thing to do was to watch World Cup Finals, Import versus Domestic and uh, just watch these badass imports, freaking back half of these crazy, um, you know, big turbo V8 cars. But anyways, this year, because of everything that's going on, they had to change it, and they're changing it to the Hail Mary Derby. So they're taking away the classes, which is kind of good because my turbo size doesn't fit the class that I should be in. I'd have to switch to a little bit smaller turbo, but they're going away with all the classes. They are gonna do some type of racing, um, they're talking about doing some heads-up racing, so hopefully we get like into a small shootout or something with some cars in the same horsepower range, same time range, but um, really I want to go out there because the air is freaking perfect. The track prep is literally the best in the country, and uh, it's going to be a good time. So you can do test and tune. Like I said, you can do some grudge racing, so we're trying to get some grudge races in, and then hopefully maybe do like a small shootout with a couple cars would be cool. Um, so I have a separate series on kind of getting ready for that once FL2K is over, but pretty much we just got done streetcar takeover, won the street racer heads up class quarter mile, and a uh, few issues we've got to address. I've got to redo the ground wire, so um, my trunk. I'm not very happy with how my trunk looks, but it's kind of worked for the meantime. But anyways, we've got our ground, not that one there, but we've got the ground wire going back there just to some, like literally part of the chassis that was bought, that was sanded off, put a self tapper through it and that was my ground. Well, it's a self tapper. It came loose over time and that ground faulted over the weekend. It was my fault. Uh, Joe and I are gonna actually weld. This is what we were gonna do originally, just haven't had time. But since this is actually welded to the frame, um, we're going to just weld a bolt to either this plate or to the actual cage itself. And then that's going to serve as our ground back here for the battery. So we'll have a real strong ground and then we shouldn't have any more electrical issues. Uh, I'm going to switch this battery back to a lightweight battery. going to get some new terminals, clean up some of the wiring back here and probably the biggest project I have to get done. It doesn't sound like that big of a project, but it's a decent sized project is I've got to remove this 10 gallon ice tank, remove the stock tank, and then put in this custom tank that I had made a few months ago. Um, I was supposed to put that in a while ago. Some things happened, didn't have time to do it. Some other stuff I'd do on the car, but that is a uh, fuel cell ice tank combo. 
And the reason why I got that is because I run the stock tank in the car and with the way the pumps are set up in the tank, you know, when the car wheelies or the car picks the front end up pretty good, it sloshes all the fuel to the back and those triple pumps can't pick up the fuel and then it fuel cuts. So what I've typically been doing for the probably the last year is running a full tank of gas. I think it's like 13 gallons, something like that. So I've been running a full tank of gas in this thing. And if you guys know anything about going fast, biggest thing is weight. So if I can put in, I want to say that's a, hmm, it's five or seven gallon. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. But it's a five or seven gallon fuel cell. Um, and then a five to seven gallon ice tank. I can't remember. One of them's five, one of them's seven. But anyways, that's a 10 gallon ice tank. I don't ever use that much ice. Um, so a little bit smaller on the ice tank side. And then obviously save me, I can save like 50, 60 pounds by just running less fuel. So, and what's cool about this one is it has the little ring up top so I can run the stock style hat that I have in there. Obviously it's a Division X Lethal Performance triple pump hat, but it's stock style. And so they sell like a specific little ring that you have to run on these fuel cells for it. Anyways, so probably the biggest task is get this guy out, which would be easy. We're going to drain all the water out, take all the fittings off, um, get that stuff out of the way, and then get this tank out. Then we're going to mock up that tank in here. Um, and then once it's mocked up, I'll pull the triple hat out. And then biggest thing probably is extending the wires. And then I'm going to have to extend the fuel line and the return line because obviously they're not going to be long enough to get to the tank that's back here because the obviously the stock tank is under the back seat so that's kind of like the biggest thing we got to do i probably won't finish it tonight um but the biggest thing to get going on is to get this out of here get all the water drained out um drop the drive shaft probably and then i want to i really want to mock that up tonight so i can figure out how long the lines i need and then look at extending all the wires that I have to extend for the hat to go in there. So we are going to get started on that. Alright guys, so there is or was the current tank, 10 gallon, just an ice tank. And then now we've got the fuel cell. So it's a nice opening right there to pour the fuel in. And then got the stock style flange right there. So we can put the Division X Lethal Performance hat back in, utilize that one. And then this is the new ice tank. So um, we're gonna get this mounted up here. I'm gonna clean some of this stuff out, but we're gonna get that mounted up and the ice tank part of it should be pretty easy to mount up obviously because everything was already in there the only thing is we might have to move some lines around a little bit but that part should be pretty easy it's going to be which will probably in another video is running the fuel hat up here and then running the fuel lines to it and having to rewire the fuel hat so uh, i'm gonna start taking some fittings off that get this one mocked up and see what it looks like in there all right so essentially this is how the tank i want it to sit Easy access for the ice, um, easy access for drain, and then easy access for the fuel, obviously. So like I said, this will be where the stock fuel hat goes, and then we'll just put fuel in right there. So it'll be super easy, really accessible. Um, and I always have this open in between rounds anyways, because I'm charging the battery. So um, the only thing that kind of sucks is we're going to figure out how I'm going to move the on-off push, because um, that is kind of in the way. So. Um, actually, I had this crazy idea last night of how I want to do the trunk setup. I want to actually clean it up a lot, so I'm actually going to take it to Streetcar Joe's house um, next week. So you guys will have to wait on the video to see what we actually do with the trunk setup. Because we're going to do something a little different, something a little crazy. And uh, I think it's going to turn out really cool. And uh, it'll actually help everything mount in here better. Because the way that this is set up right now... Um, I'd have to add some brackets over here. We can mount it pretty easily, but I want to do something a little bit different and I want this to sit maybe a little bit lower. So, um, and like I said, I kind of want to clean all this stuff up back here. So in the next couple of videos, you guys will see us at Streetcar Joe's house. The car is going to go back over there. Finally, it hasn't been there in a long time, but we're actually going to do something super custom back here. So you have to wait on that, but 
What I want to talk to you guys today is I did get some other maintenance items for the car before FL2K. Um, I got another Transpan gasket. This Moroso one was recommended to me um, by a few people because I keep having issues with the Transpan freaking leaking. Um, it just got rebuilt. Transmission's doing really good, but it's leaking a lot. So um, I did get this Moroso gasket. So hopefully that'll help us out. Um, the gasket they use just it's leaking the ones that have previously used have leaked So finally got this Moroso one. I've even tried the lube locker one which a lot of people recommend and that one leaked So I'm gonna try this Moroso one. Hopefully that's gonna fix it And then the other thing is I'm actually switching oil So a lot of people always ask me because my stock motor lasted so long with a lot of horsepower and uh, Let me show you the new oil I'm be running well I'll show you. We'll talk about this one in just a second. Let me show you the oil that I was running and had a lot of good luck with. Um, there. So I was actually running Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic, just 5W30, nothing crazy. It's just their Full Synthetic from Pennzoil. Really good oil. I actually used that in my Hellcat. Stuff worked awesome. Um, my stock motor held up to like 1100, 1150 horsepower. And it had the ticking all along and that motor when we pulled it apart when RPG pulled it apart It looked freaking brand new on the inside And so when I went to the built motor will from RPG had recommended this driven oil But he's like man your car did so well with the other oil. He's like I don't I can't tell you not to use it because it works so good So I used the pens oil for a while, but this car does run a little bit hotter than a stock motor setup So it's still a stock block but sleeved o-ringed um, same compression, but it is a forged bottom end. So it does run a little bit hotter. And then obviously with the turbo setup, it runs a little bit hotter. Um, and I strictly race it. So I've had some, um, some issues. And so I'm finally going to change oil. I was changing that oil, the pens oil, um, like every couple weeks. Cause it was getting real, it was getting way too hot. It was, it was thinning out really like really really soon it was thinning out like the lifespan on that penzo was not very good with how hot this engine runs so i went back to what will recommended and what lund recommended so this is driven racing oil fr50 so it's their synthetic full synthetic 5w50 it's pretty much made for coyotes and made for boosted coyotes so um, it's a little bit thicker and it actually helps with i was throwing a code the last time out um it was a cam sensor code, I can't remember exactly which one, PO 350 or 340, something like that. And Lund says that'll happen sometimes if you're not running uh, thick enough oil. You gotta make sure you're running enough oil, which with these Gen 3s you run, you run 10 quarts. I run a little bit more obviously because of the turbo system. It's got extra lines and stuff to go through the turbo to keep that lubricated. So I run a little bit over 10, 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters, whatever comes out to, but um, this oil actually helped their car. The Blue Goose had the same problems and they switched oil and uh, fixed all the problems. So that sensor, I think it's based off of a solenoid, probably talking out of my ass here, but it's based off of a solenoid in there. And so when the oil pressure is not good, that code will throw. So switching oils to this driven FR50. I know a lot of people already use this in boosted coyote applications, but I'm finally switching over. So I got 11 quarts of this. Cause like I said, I do run a little bit extra for the turbo system. So I'm really excited to switch that oil out. Um, like I said, I had really good luck with the pens oil on the stock motor, but now with a little bit bigger turbo, the engine's forged, it's running a little bit hotter. And uh, you know, we're pushing, we're gonna start leaning on the car. We're not pushing it hard, but we are gonna start leaning on it a little bit more. So I think that oil is definitely gonna help out. Um, I got this little carbon piece and I'm finally gonna make a piece that goes around the shifter. I've seen a lot of people do it, Honestly, I just haven't had the time to do it. I've been kind of focused on some other things of the car. So I'm trying to start to clean up stuff now that the car is running really good. Um, starting to clean up some stuff, do some maintenance items, but we're gonna cut this carbon sheet sometime next week to fit around the shifter, and that'll really clean up the center console area. Um, but I'm really, really excited after talking to Joe about doing this trunk setup. I think it's gonna look super cool, and uh, it's gonna be really efficient. We're not gonna have to run as much fuel, so we got a smaller fuel tank. Won't have to run as much ice, a little bit smaller ice tank. So we'll be able to save some weight there. Um, and then don't have to worry about running 
the stock tank full all the time. So I'm going to drop the, well, we're not going to drop the tank yet because I got to drive the car to Joe's house, but we're going to drive the car to Joe's house next week sometime. And you guys will see a video on that, but pretty much just have to drop the drive shaft stock tank, um, put the hat in here, wire up the fuel pumps to here, extend some fuel lines, and then do the trunk setup that we're going to do to mount this. And then obviously get the water pump on there the Davy Craig's water pump for the ice tank and then hook up the return and the drain line. And then I'm gonna have to move this somewhere else. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet because that hole is obviously already cut. So hopefully I don't have to move it too much, but that is what it is at this point. And then uh, I'm gonna create a new battery mounting solution because I'm gonna get a lightweight battery. I used to run a lightweight battery, had some electrical issues, went back to the stock battery, but I think I finally figured out the electrical issues. So I'm gonna go back to a light battery because this, you know, this battery is pretty heavy. You can save easily 30 to 40 pounds by just doing a lightweight lithium battery. So that's going to conclude today's video. Got the uh, ice tank out. Got some things moved around. Kind of eyeballed how I want to set it up. And uh, I was going to drop the drive shaft and the tank in this video. But since Joe and I came up with a different idea for the trunk setup, um, we're going to have to wait till we get to Joe's house to fix that. And then... Um, in the next few videos, guys, I'll do the oil change. We'll put the trans pan gasket on. Uh, do a little bit of maintenance items. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys are going to FL2K, hopefully, I get to meet you guys out there. Come say what's up. Uh, but I'm going to be racing at FL2K October 9th through the 11th. Kennedy and I are going to make the long, long haul. I think it's like 22 hours or something like that. It's going to be a long haul. So hopefully, you guys are excited as I am. I'm really excited to go to that track. Um, the DA is decent. Track prep is really good out there, and uh, we're going to go just have some fun, go some rounds, meet some new people, and uh, I've been to Florida a few times, but never to race or hang out, so it'll be a good time. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you guys liked the content, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.